ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل وكل ضلاله في النار in what was collected by the imams bukhari and muslim on the authority of our mother aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha she said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would say allahumma inni a'udhu bika aw oh allah i seek refuge in you min al-ma'dham wal maghram aw allah i seek refuge in you from sin and heavy death and then somebody came and asked the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how often it is that you seek refuge with allah from heavy debt o messenger of allah and then the messenger of allah said when a man gets into debt he speaks and he tells lies and he makes a promise and he breaks his promise and so what i want to speak about today ikhwani fillah is the issue of debt the issue of debt how does our religion look at the person who falls in debt and takes debt upon himself is it a small issue or is it a large issue imam an-nasa'i narrates on the authority of the companion muhammad ibn jahsh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he said one day we were sitting with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he raised his head towards the sky and he put his hand on his forehead and he said subhanallah what a serious issue that has been revealed to me today <coughs> and the companions remained quiet and they were afraid and then the companion says the next day the following morning I said oh messenger of Allah what is this serious issue which has been revealed to you and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said by the one in whose hand is my soul if a man were killed in a battle for the sake of Allah and then brought back to life and then killed and brought back to life again and then killed and he owed a debt he would not enter jannah until his debt was paid off This is how serious being in debt is looked at in the deen of al-Islam. And we live my dear brothers we live in a society which encourages debt. We live in a society which is almost built upon the premise that a person will take upon himself and upon his shoulders debt. It was narrated from Thawban radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever dies whilst he is free from three things then he will enter into jannah and the three things that he mentioned was arrogance cheating and debt my dear brothers in al-islam we live in a time with credit cards we live in a time buy now pay later we live in a time don't worry you can split this over 4 years or 3 years or whatever it may be in other words our society is built upon taking onto our shoulders debt 
And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the soul of the believer is suspended because of his debt until it is paid off. Imam Tirmidhi reports this hadith. And so you will find in our society, many of our young brothers and our elders as well, living in a manner that is beyond their means, living in a way which is beyond their financial situation because they take upon themselves credit, debt after debt after debt. And so you will find some of our youth, they will go out and perhaps he doesn't have enough money to even pay the bills at the end of the month. But he goes out and he buys clothes and watches and things in order to post onto social media to show the people that he is somebody who is wealthy, to show the people that he is successful. In other words, to put an image up of himself that is simply a lie, is false. And in order to show this, in order to try and compete with other people online, he takes onto his shoulders crippling debt, crippling debt. Until you find that a person, he gets his wages at the end of the month and he doesn't even have enough to cover the outgoings for the debt that he owes. And so what does he do? He takes another credit card and he takes a credit card to pay off the payments on his existing debt. And he just falls deeper and deeper into debt. This is the society that we are living in. 20, 30,000 pounds in debt for what? SubhanAllah. For these possessions. For these possessions which bring no benefit. Imam Qurtubi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions concerning debt, it is a disgrace and a humiliation because it preoccupies the mind and makes a person worried about paying it off. It makes a person feel humiliated in front of the person who has lent him the money when he meets him. And he makes him feel that he is doing him a favor. And so he constantly feels lower. Perhaps he may make a promise to pay it off and he may break that promise. Or he may speak to the lender and he may lie to him. Or he may make an oath. I, wallahi, I'm going to pay this off by this time or that day or this time. And so he may break that oath. Moreover, he may die whilst not having cleared that debt. And so he will be held hostage because of it. As the Prophet ﷺ said that the soul of the believer is held hostage and in his grave until it is paid off. Imam Tirmidhi reported that hadith as we have mentioned. And so Ikhwani Fillah, look at the situation that we find ourselves in. That our deen is extremely serious when it comes to the issue of debt. That a man should live in his means. Live within his means. If you can afford it, take it. And if you can't, don't take upon your shoulder, my brother, debt after debt after debt. The Prophet wasallam, he warned us against this. And he himself, when a companion, he was in debt, a companion died, and the Messenger وسلم, was going to pray his janazah prayer. And then he asked, has he got any debt? And they told that he was just two dirhams in debt. And so the Messenger of Allah said, pray over your companion. And the Messenger وسلم, himself didn't pray over him. To show the seriousness of the debt. To show how serious it is being in debt. Likewise, he didn't pray over the one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who committed suicide. To show the people that this is a serious issue. And then Abu Qatada radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, O Messenger of Allah, I've paid off his debt. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, now his skin has become cool for him. Now he has left that situation that he was in. And so, ikhwani fillah, 
these things, these dunya possessions that we are getting ourselves into debt for, Wallahi, they are not worth it. They are not worth the worry and the stress and the anxiety. They're not worth if you die tomorrow and your soul is held back. If you're put in a difficult position or you put the people after you in a difficult position who have to pay off your debt. And so the Muslim, he should be careful of falling into debt, just like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was careful of it and he warned his companions of it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا We cannot mention debt without mentioning what goes hand in hand with debt in our society and that is riba and that is interest because so many of these loans and these mortgages and these student loans and whatever it might be they don't come free of charge they come with riba they come with interest and this is a bitter pill to swallow but wallahi the medicine it has to be bitter sometimes the medicine is bitter and if you don't take the medicine because it's not bitter you're not going to get better our religion is very serious when it comes to this issue of riba the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he cursed the one who pays the riba he cursed the one who accepts the riba he cursed the one who writes down the contract of riba he cursed the one who witnesses it and he said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim that they are all alike all of them they share the same burden of sin they are all going to take the burden of that sin Allah says those people who deal in interest they're not going to stand إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِ They're not going to stand on Yawm Al-Qiyamah except like the person who has been beaten to insanity by the shaytan. That's how they're going to stand on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That's going to be their situation. إِخْوَانِ فِي اللَّهِ We buy houses on riba. You know in our, in our community we take a mortgage buy the house on riba, put the lodgers in, we make a bit of profit and we say, no problem, inshallah, 25 years, I'll have the assets, I'll have it. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, a dirham, one pound, which a man, he knowingly takes of riba, is worse than 36 cases of zina. 36 cases, Shaykh al-Albani made this hadith authentic. 36 cases of riba for one pound and you want to get take a, a mortgage for a hundred thousand pounds and then this person walks in and the people say mashallah he has five properties or ten properties and he walks with pride we say my brother swallow that pride and cry over your sins cry over what you've seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says riba sadaqat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy riba Allah will destroy riba and he will give increase to sadaqat. Allah addresses me and you, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullah. Oh, you people who believe have taqwa of Allah. Wazaru ma baqiya min riba And give up what remains of riba. In kuntum mu'mineen. If you are truly believers. If you are mu'mineen, give up what remains of riba. Fa'in lam taf'alu. And if you don't give it up, if you don't do that, then take notice of a war from Allah and His Messenger. My brother, would you wage war now? Would you go and pick up your things now and say, I'm going to wage war against the United States or China, or I'm going to wage war against the armies of the world? La wallahi. How then can you wage war against Allah and His Messenger? 
How can you wage war against Allah and his messenger? This is a war that you cannot and you will not win. Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu said, the person who dealt with riba, this means, Yawm al-Qiyamah, he's going to be given weapons and he's going to be told, go and fight against Allah. You dealt with riba, the warning came to you, you didn't give it up, go and fight against Allah. Fa subhanallah. In another narration, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that riba has 70 odd levels. Riba has 70 odd levels. The lowest level is like a man committing zina with his own mother. Ikhwani fillah, this is serious. Don't look at riba. Wallahi, the car that you want to drive is not worth the riba. The house that you want to live in is not worth the riba. Allah will destroy riba and we're living in it. And then we say, Mulfi Saab, why is my family like this? Why is there no barakah in my life? Why are my children not praying? Why does my wife like this? Why am I not feeling the sweetness of the salah? You're living in a war against Allah and his messenger. Ikhwani fillah, wallahi, there are ways out. Don't say this is a durura. I want to cover this. People say, brother, we live in this country, it's a necessity. Let me tell you what necessity is, my brother. Necessity is that you are starving to death and there's pork there. You take a bite out of the pork just to keep you alive. You don't take the pork and then put ketchup on it and mayonnaise and make it into a pork sandwich. You take the minimum amount to keep you alive. My brother, if the house that you live in, if it's a necessity, if all of the do all of the properties on rent have been cut off and the cow everything's cut off, then why do you need to go and spend half a million pound? Why don't you buy the smallest possible property? Why do you need to go and buy a detached house with five bedrooms? This is the rura. This is playing with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala. This is playing with the deen of Allah, and like I said, it's bitter. But wallahi, sometimes the medicine needs to be bitter to work. Let every man look at his situation, my brothers in Islam, and leave off what remains of riba if you are truly believers. And I want to end with this one hadith on the authority of Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there will come a time for mankind when everybody will take riba. And if he doesn't do that, then the dust of it will reach him. Allah knows best, but we are living in those times where the whole financial situation and the system of this world is built upon riba. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. Do your best to stay away from riba. And if the dust of it touches you, then inshallah you're okay because the whole world is based upon it. And we ask Allah wa ta'ala to keep us away from riba. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for that which is past and to rectify our affairs. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala abdika wa rasulika nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ahabihi ajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Astaghfirullah.